Hi, welcome back to the Left Handed Chef. Uh, my name is Aaron Vaughn. Um, I've been cooking for about 27 years and I'm trying to bring a little bit of that knowledge um, to everybody else. Um, I had a brain abscess about a year ago and trying to do it with one hand, um, trying to help out people that are in the community and for everyone else. So today we're going to do a roast pork tenderloin with roasted potatoes, broccoli, peppers, onions, and a little bit of a uh, tomato. So let's hop right to it. So first of all, I went ahead and pre-marinated my tenderloin with rosemary, oil, and garlic, just to get a little jump start on that. And all you do there is just chop up some garlic, chop up some thyme, and a little bit of oil, um, salt and pepper, and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Go on there and let that sit for about, you know, you want to let that sit for about an hour. So we'll hop right to it. So got my grill pan on and we're going to go right in because pork tenderloin is going to take a while. So we're going to go right on in with that pork tenderloin. And while that's cooking, we'll get the vegetables ready after I wash my hand. And this is another quick dish that you can do. So next, we'll get the potatoes ready. A little bit of olive oil. Salt. Pepper. And you know me with my dry thyme. And I like to do whole small potatoes. Um, I don't know if, I, if you remember. Um, I just like it because it's like having a mini baked potato. And I just love it. It's very creamy. I cook it at 400 degrees in the convection oven for about 30 minutes. And it'll be ready to go. So we'll put that on a little hot plate. And then we shall put that in like so, and we shall put that in the oven. Set the timer for 30 minutes and set it and forget it. <laughs> so now we're going to cut the onion. And I have a little adaptive cutting board here. It's got suction cups on the bottom nails to hold the, the onion, a little backdrop here to help me with um, if anything falls. And it's one of my favorite things that, that I have in my little cooking repertoire now. So flip that over, we're gonna peel off the paper and then we're going to cut a bite-sized piece, a little medium dice. Put that in the salt or in the bowl, the salt tape in. Don't mind me; I get a little tongue-tied sometimes, but who doesn't? I'm just using half the onion. We'll save the other onion for leftover. So now we're going to cut the pepper. And you can get whatever color. I got yellow. Um, you can get red, but I didn't want to get red because of the red tomato. I'm funny like that when it comes to colors um, of food. I want things to be different, you know. All right. And I went ahead and pre-washed everything as well, too, to make it just a little bit easier. And this, we're going to medium dice this as well, or large dice. Because what we're going to do is we're going to cut the broccoli next. And you want everything to be the same size when you're cooking. It just makes things... That way you can put multiple things together and they can cook, which we're going to do here. And make life just a little bit easier for me and anyone else. I'll cook as well. 
So we're going to save the other half of the pepper for leftovers as well. Cut up the end. And there we go. All right. Now, the good thing about broccoli is it's pretty much all ready to go. So all you have to do is just cut it off. Make sure if there's any big pieces, you can cut it again at the base, and that'll break it up. Or you can cut it off. It just depends on what you want, it, what you prefer. And then we're good to go. Cut up that. And broccoli, I like to cut it last because it's it's the most messy of all the vegetables because it just leaves that little broccoli um, pieces everywhere. So we'll rinse off the cutting board, wipe off the cutting cooking cutting surface, and I'm just rinsing this because we just cut vegetables, so we don't need to we didn't cut any meat. So we should be good to go. So now you have your vegetables going with a low olive oil, about a table, a half a tea, well, one teaspoon. The salt. And you guess it. A little bit of time. You can either mix it with your hand or you can toss it, whatever your skill level is at. And this would be a good way to practice sauteing as well if you um, haven't done that. So we're going to go right here on the pan, wash your hands. And we're going to check the torque. We're going to turn it. And we're going to put that in the cross sections. And we're going to do three sides. Um, so that'll grill. We'll rotate it again. And by the time we get to the third side, it should be close to being done. If it's not, you can put it in the oven or you can finish it up top. It just depends on how you want to do it. So we're at about 25 minutes on the potatoes. We're going to wait a little bit. Um, we're going to wait probably 10 more minutes for the vegetables. And then, so we'll take a little break and then I'll be right back. All right, so we're back. So I just rotated the pork, it's on the second side. So that's coming along nicely. We're going to go in with the vegetables, with the broccoli, the peppers, and the onions. Put this right underneath. Close the door. And we'll check that in about 10 minutes. And so we can go ahead and cut the tomato. So I'm going to do this raw. Um, it's summertime in North Carolina. And tomato season is upon us. Um, made tomato mayonnaise sandwiches are huge here. Um, I'm only going to use half the tomato tonight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them thickly cover. Salt, pepper, olive oil, and balsamic vinegar. 
So go ahead and get that ready. And I just do one side. You can twist around a little bit for the oil because you don't want to over season it. I, the way I season, if I flip things over, especially with tomatoes, it can be, it can be a little over salty. So I'm going to put this over to the side. Let that sit. And then we'll check up on the pork. See how that's doing. Oh, uh, that's coming along nicely. So now I rolled it over to a third side and should do about five minutes on that um, um, right there. And five minutes, we'll turn it again. And we should be right about five minutes left on the potatoes. And then we can allow that to rest and it should be good to go. So I uh, will be right back for step three. All right, now here we are. Pork's looking good. By way to pull it, we'll check the vegetables. It's been about 10 minutes. So check to see how that's coming along. Watch your glasses. <laughs> yeah. And, oh man, that's starting to look really good. You want it to be nice and hard. So, and the potatoes, oh, those are good. So we'll go ahead and pull those. Those will be really hot, so those, those will still be hot in about 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull. Now, you can get a thermometer or you can go by feel. But to be safe, you can always get a thermometer. It's very easy, you open it up, it comes on, and then you can just stick it in. And we're not quite there. We're about at 130 degrees. You need to be pork, you want to be around 135 to 140. So we'll let that go a little bit longer. Push that over to the side. And another thing I'm doing with this one is we're Americans, so we love our bread. So I'm going to grill some naan. So I bought some naan from the grocery store. I like to make it, but I, it's really hard to do right now with one hand, but man, homemade naan is amazing. So hopefully I can figure out a way to do it with one hand. If not, um, I'll have a guest maybe show you how to do it. So. We'll let that go. Cook that up. Put some grill marks on that. If you want, you can brush it with a little bit of olive oil to help it along. And you'll see that I have set up two cutting boards. So what I'm going to do is once that pork is done, I'm going to put it on here and let it rest for at least five minutes. And what that does when you're cooking, everything's really tight. And when you let it rest, everything loosens up and the liquid comes out and then you get the perfect temperature. Because a lot of times when you check something right when it right when you pull it off, it sometimes it'll look like it's it's over and it's really not. So let it rest and see where you're at, and you'll be able to tell um, if you're if you're over or not. And like like I said with this non, we're just grilling it lightly. We're just trying to warm it up. We're not trying to you know reinvent the wheel here. So we'll just finish that up and then. We'll check on the vegetables in a few more minutes. And the pork needs about another three. Pork's been resting for about five minutes. We're getting ready to pull off the vegetables. Set those over here in our plating area. Nice and roasted. And cutting it, you can do one of two things. Um, you can use the nail cutting board, the assisted cutting board. And 
you want to cut against the grain of meat. So look where that is. And cut and slice on the bias. And then come over here. And then we shall plate plate the food. We'll put the vegetables, the nice roast of vegetables here on the bottom. There we go. We'll put a little bit of balsamic vinegar on the tomatoes. And then we'll put the pork on here as well. And pork's okay to eat a little medium rare to medium, especially the pork tenderloin. And there you go. You have a wonderful dish that's nice and summery, very easy, and not too much to it. So thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Also, the recipe will be in the comments. So look, and if you like it, if you like what I did, look for the recipe. And if you have any other questions, please leave it in the comments. Thank you so much.